So should I should I get started? Uh, so this is a sunbudded user workflows. See, ultimately we have been talking about a lot of configurational thinking. Matthew had covered a lot of infra aspects. Why certain DB has to be used? Why you know there are some APIs that have been created? There are some building blocks. How do they all get orchestrated in a user flow? That is also very very important. If a user is going through a flow, what are the APIs that are, we are going to invoke? And what are the building blocks that are going to come in? So that is the intent of this entire sunbudded workflows. So just for if someone gets a uh, you know P1, if I have call, if I have to call it as I don't know whether you guys call it as a P1 or a ticket, you know somewhere production the user is not able to get the course progress, certificate is not being issued. These are the general problems that you get to see because at least I have swim through it almost like four years now. <laughs> so so uh, that's where you know understanding of this correlation how does it connect to the api which are the apis which are relevant for your flows is very important okay logically the flows will be broken in two ways this is very very important and one of the core concepts of sunbird as well uh, my suggestion is please try to focus first one is a anonymous user flows one of the success factors for diksha or even sunbird ed is that the content was accessible to lot of children in india without login they were able to access textbooks without login login is one of the fundamental blockers for the entry barrier into the application people will get fret because we are all technology enabled digitally empowered people right but look at the people who are really who actually do a day to day job for them learning software is not their core problem area so one of one of the success factors which actually contributed to this when when we took a when we look at the evolution of sunbudded or diksha was that lot of these contents or textbooks were available to the users without even logging in okay so you, I, we can logically actually break these user flows into two ways one is the anonymous user i don't have an identity i am just interested in your content i will look at the content i will read it i am happy i will go back i am no i am and system is also nowhere interested to know who the user is what are their details what is the profile you come in right it has some basic information but not nothing more than that the second one is a logged in user the logged in user is the one who has an intent he wants to get trained he wants to get assessed he also wants certificate there are couple of programs in diksha uh, and also in couple of other initiatives as well the certification is a kind of an outcome logically because we had seen in some of the gujarat programs where they had used the certificates to be there you know probably deciding their next appraisal also logically okay and someone was complaining that you know the certificates are not getting issued 31st is the last date i am going to lose my increment next particular year so you know the implications are real in nature right then these are the users who have an intent of getting trained getting certificates and also you, their progress and other things get tracked so it is logically you know divided into two flows anonymous user logged in user okay before getting further there is one specific video that i want to show you guys how does this affect anonymous and logged in user there is a content and collection that we spoke about in the sunbird ecosystem there are four object types there are primarily there are more but four of them are very predominant content collection question question set okay just to write it down content can someone say what is a content because you guys have been just to keep it interactive can someone say what is a content give a example of a content uh, video perfect video pdf epub couple of other things right etc second is a collection when you have too many contents and if and you can't put everything in your desktop correct just because you have lot of files what would you logically do perfect so this is nothing but a folder like a structure okay it can does your folder can have multi folders inside perfect then you can have a content 
rather than calling this as a folder folder will be a bit of a underplay this is only for the aam aadmi explanation this is logically called as collection collection is nothing but it can consist of one or more collections and contents inside it okay this collection has to be named so that user is able to correlate so that is where it is called as course textbook uh quiz lot of these things training programs so you can name it in any user conventional way there is no hard rule as i said the object category creation all those things will help you in this place okay so this is on the content this is on the collection the third object type is the question the inquiry that we all spoke about right question is nothing but you know there is a question there is an answer and there is a possible solution there is also a, a tip on how to solve this question so all this metadata is part of this question object question set is again a folder but however here you don't call it as a collection but you call it as a question set it also has its own exclusive properties right your folder also has its own exclusive properties similarly your question set also has its own exclusive properties you can say this question set has a timing of 60 seconds it cannot run more than that it has a maximum mark of n it cannot exceed more than that okay generally on the consumption side when the user consumes it he consumes question set it is implicitly he consumes a question individually questions are not consumable at least with the how diksha works today okay so these are the object types this is called as object types so there are also event event set all those things but we have not seen much of the use cases of it the apis do tend to exist but it is not being leveraged right now okay and this is being leveraged as part of other community initiatives probably okay so why do i said all these things how is it even connected to workflows that is very very important when i said collection there was a course there was a textbook there were also quizzes and some of those things right not all collections could be relevant for logged in users no not all uh, collections could be relevant for anonymous users so there has to be some fundamental classification on how this collection is done so that is the video that we are going to play you guys now and then that will give you an idea why there is a anonymous user and a logged in user distinction okay content apa content collection to excel run madapa hmm? play play back so what is the content logically so as you guys all said it's all different media types it's a video it can be a pdf or it can be audio epub any resource it's called as a resource by the way in the terminology any resource can be uploaded to the platform it is an independent node in the neo 4j terms i don't know how many of you are aware of graph db but uh, this is a independent nodes can you pause it, it's become too fast yeah uh, just ah uh, okay so it's a independent node which which is without any association so you have created a file without any association okay logically when you start grouping these contents into a collection into a folder that is when it starts to make a user sense for someone to consume okay now let us look at how the process goes in so every content every resource that is getting at the end of it just pause it okay every content has a life cycle this will be covered as part of your knowledge sessions which are probably going on but this is from a end to end perspective how a person should think through a content every content has its own life cycle you can create a content and send this for review once the review once the reviewer comes in who is the role who is going to review this can someone say hey, any no sunbird folks should say okay <laughs> who is going to be the person who is going to review do anyone know what is the role content perfect content reviewer so content reviewer comes in and curates the information 
okay this is considered to be one of the mandates even uh, because all the mobile apps that goes out right google play console specifically mandates that any content coming out of the platform it's a sole responsibility of the owner so having a content curation where an explicit declaration is made there is no specific references to caste creed religion or races all those things a, a, a content creator has to explicitly declare it a reviewer also is expected to look into it and publish it saying i have looked through everything now it can go into a either a published cycle or a rejection cycle once it gets rejected goes back for the further modifications if it is published it becomes live for the overall consumption so there is also a possibility that it can be retired or failed retired is basically when the content is no more relevant for the system someone can go and retire that content failed is something you know the the processing could not happen on the publish gets into a failed bucket i hope i am right right on the failed perfect so this is how the typical process is just as i explained once the create is done a review it sent for the review either the person can reject or a publish it if there is a rejection then it can be asked for an update subsequently and again it goes for the review on the updated content again it goes into the two options either the person can reject can it or thing? publish it yeah uh, so when the content goes for publishing uh, we talked about an uh, plugin called as extensibility framework uh, in the beginning there is something called as forms form apis and all those things similar to that there is one more plugin which will be used to give comments Okay, for a content which wanted to be published, published. Yeah. There is a button next to the publish. If you remember it, it is called comment. Okay, it click on it. It uses that particular extensibility plugin. There is one more plugin using the same extensibility. Ext framework. framework. Yeah. yeah. Because it came, I just uh, wanted to be highlight. Okay, let's move ahead. yeah this is the final thing where you know a person can at any point of time send it this to a retired status so any failed can come back to gets republished what are the types of content i think this is probably we can give it a skip most of them knows it yeah. just go ahead for the drag muddy drag drag okay uh, can you pause it here yeah this is very important so one of the critical parts or one of the core metadata that we need to understand is a content metadata or a collection metadata logically there is no difference in the schema except for few parameters okay there are a lot of common parameters that comes in this is the content metadata what is being shown here okay the first one is the name how do you identify it with the name is it a lesson 1 of a textbook lesson 1 biology something of that sort okay then you have a status the status is the life cycle that we spoke about in the previous one is it a retired is it a published is it a live draft what it is then we have a media type so basically what kind of a media type is it a mp4 so those things audience the relevance of the content can also be tagged if you look at okay it is also possible that you know this is only applicable for teachers this is only applicable for students uh can we move ahead description of the content uh can you pause now please this is where it is very important the trackable okay generally any user who is not logged in will have this trackable collection coming in as false for him which means user progress or user identity is not required for the consumption any content or a collection whose trackable status is true would require user to log in that is where i said you know there is a clear distinction on anonymous user and a logged in user okay so the course is a trackable collection textbook is it a trackable collection do you want to track how many people really went through the progress probably not right kids would come in they would read through the textbook they would move away so it's a non trackable trackable is probably is false when you have trackable property being enabled as true it also associate itself with the auto batch the batch creation process okay further we will explain this uh, there is this video will continue to explain some of those things primary category is a user story how user should identify this content is it a learning material for me 
is this a digital textbook content for me? Is it a e-textbook or is it a web series? That comes in a primary category. Let's move ahead. Yeah. So any anything that is called as uh, can you can you pause it for a minute? So let's assume if if you are dealing with a trackability. So there is also a possibility that you know the person would be allowed certain number of attempts. So all that metadata is available as part of a content. Let's move ahead. So any dial codes, keywords which are used for search, how, so that the relevant discovery can come in. So all those things are leveraged. Uh, can we go to the taxonomy? Uh, uh, can you can you come back? Interactivity level, huh? mm. interactivity level. No, I think it's about the learning path. If I remember correctly, uh, wherein uh, it was used for the whether he is on the learning path of uh, expert or something of that sort. Uh, it's more. It's not really used so heavily. Just the common yeah. we have to look up, we have written a definition and we have tried it. No, the schema grows uh, when you look at the whole. The schema thing. grows on based on its own purpose and everything. Okay, so uh, and it's also have that the content gets rated by the users and you'll get to see that metadata also being available. Is it a 4.5 rating or all those things? Let's move on. Sure, just one second before we see. Like, uh, any idea who is giving this data? Like how this data, what so your editors knowledge team yeah in the knowledge bb is a contract from the knowledge to the printing saying if you want the content to get persisted you need to adhere to the schema and editors are written with the same intent saying that they will adhere to the schema so lot of your information out here except for few of them would actually come as part of your collection i mean the the content editor or a collection editor when you save the content through them so that's where player editors and the content everything comes under the knowledge bb because they know when there is a change in this what are the changes that is supposed to correspondingly happen on the editors what are the changes supposed to happen on the players so this is a sourcing sourcing of the metadata okay so uh, so there are two steps uh, you need to get into the knowledge uh, repo you need to extend the schema so there is a particular uh, json json right so you have to extend that schema then uh, you have to make the corresponding changes some default values that you have to pass it from the editor Jenkins, uploading of the schema. Yeah. So basically, see the way how I think this is where the actual beauty of the knowledge would come out, right? Let's assume it's a typical standalone project, and we have a object called as user, user, user ID, username, and password. Let's assume three fields are there. If I want to add a fourth field, what I would do? I would go in, write a getter and setter, and I will go and do the changes on the UI, and finally I will deploy both the projects. Correct? but here you don't need to do that it's uh, the 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 apis are written in a schema driven way which means they will just take your json as the source of truth you just need to modify your json if there are any business validations only then you have to go and change in the code it's just a schema update go and run the job you will have the complete api ready 
you don't need to do the developer compilation testing process everything to be done end to end so you can do it pretty faster so that uh, jenkins job will update all the schema or what will be it will update all the one thing is it it will add it to the schema there is also an option of you know you can add some of these to elastic search indexes also if let's assume the new attribute that you are introducing you want that to be a main search criteria okay tomorrow let's assume you are creating a new thing called as a government program name and it's called as nista 4.0 if you want to add such metadata generally such metadata is not expected to be added because there are a lot of metadata you can introduce you can just extend the schema just redeploy the jobs redeploy the knowledge and then make sure that your ui editor is also made the changes to send some default value so the, it's a two step process Yeah, you can just so modify you the JSON. Can do that okay, you go and update the schema. Schema. Schema file of the knowledge database for the new property, the JSON file. The Jenkins job, whatever you're saying, right? So using the Jenkins job, that's a four change you made. It. You upload that file to the blog and restart the service, service. the content service. As soon as you restart it, whatever the blog file, it will read, and all the further APIs, it will send the new property. New property. So the new property, what did you find in JSON? That will also read that uh, blog file. Yeah. yeah, it will push that file to the blog. So your content service when you restart, that new property by default comes for all the all the, all the metadata. Without any code change. So it will pass the new thing or it will update. What are default value? If we give it some default value, all the calls, it will come with the default value. If you don't give, we give default value because the property itself will not exist. The property will not come at all. So we call this as a metadata enrichment. So this is generally a problem that when you introduce a new metadata, you have to provide some default value to it. So you are doing that changes in JSON, okay? That's all. Okay. Uh, so some validation, whatever you are giving. So if if it requires a validation, it cannot happen just by the schema because then you may have to no, go no, and do some changes. It should not be uh, some textual or whatever. Yes, so values, yeah, yeah. So that, that kind of thing you give. Yes, it. yes. Then Cassandra and all is all uh, no SQL, no? There is no schema constraint okay. for you. Okay. So, so Elasticsearch everywhere it will start to auto. Uh, Correct. In all. Correct. Yeah, in in our, uh, and yes, yes. So, but it is the UI which is actually a liability. So, that is where we say that, you know, in the Sunbird system, Extending a metadata is an everyday process. So that has been taken care of very smartly that you don't, you don't need a full-fledged back-end engineer to do this. But if you look at the front-end, it's not really schema agnostic as such. If there is a property newly introduced and you have to display it, some engineer has to be invested in to go and do the change. So that is for adding. Suppose if I want to delete one in See, deletion is a little bit of a, uh, I would say a tricky situation. Because then you are losing a lot of referential integrity, mm -hmm. in my view. If there is a dependency on a metadata, I think first you have to allow this to get retired at the source, basically at all the front-end consumption channels, mm -hmm. and then you have to retire it. That's a bigger problem, actually. That's a very big yeah, problem. See, it look. It can be a content metadata, which is used in a collection, now that is reflected back inside the collection. So it's not the easy so task. So you cannot directly it's delete not it. That, yeah. it's, not it's not recommended. That is the one thing. Second thing is uh, you guys have a mobile. Look at the mobile. A mobile which is which knows the language that was spoken one year back hmm. may not even know something got retired and it will start to crash. Uh, that's why uh, there is a property. So the, just uh, uh, there is a minimum OS version. OS version, yeah. Achha, that that is added because of that only. <laughs> Okay. okay, let's move ahead. Yeah, I think we are, we are spread. So then uh, there are a couple of other attributes. What I wanted to talk about really is the, no taxonomy. Yeah. Schema auto. Schema auto. Come back a little bit. I just wanted to see if board, medium, grade and all is there. Okay, it's not in the base schema. Let's move ahead. So similarly, you will also have the metadata which, guys, 
so we'll also have a similar metadata which shows the taxonomy tagging as well so board what are the boards it is relevant to medium all all this data will get indexed into elastic search elastic search is super efficient in terms of getting doing a string based search you can do any kind of a relevant discovery okay that is that is generally the story of knowledge there are multiple uh, there is a minimal list that we have posted in the video but there are multiple like the taxonomy that he told the bmgs and all those things and there is targeted framework also not only the source framework there is targeted framework also those things are also there but we did not uh, when we created this video we did not add it extra. okay so this is the actual schema which is available probably you would go and actually deal with this particular schema being updated okay yeah uh, for updating schema so how exactly it's been done now why am asking you have to check in into a github, uh, sorry, GitHub just right. make a schema update and check in into the github and deploy the job job okay now why am asking because uh, board perspective you know for ncrt slash cbsc ah. that was made changes afterward correct correct Something. Oh, the, that is actually not a metadata change. You are not changing a you are not changing a key there. You are changing a value there. Value that is not the way. This schema extension means you are you are actually introducing new keys. It is actually key value pair. So we, whatever we have told as metadata are the keys. Values are like your Tamil Nadu, state Tamil Nadu, or let's say CBSE. Those are all values. Values, yeah. Let's say if it is a board, board will comes the key. वो वैल्यू था रेफरेंस ओके सो सो लेट्स मूव अहेड बिकॉज आई थिंक वी आर गोइंग टू लूज लॉट ऑफ टाइम नाउ नो नो गो अहेड देर इज स्टिल द मेन इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग हैव टू शो सो कलेक्शन लॉजिकली यू नो इज वेयर आई हैव सेड इट्स लाइक अ फोल्डर स्ट्रक्चर व्हिच कैन हैव मोर देन वन कंटेंट राइट देयर आर आल्सो टाइप ऑफ कलेक्शंस इफ यू रिमेंबर द ट्रैकेबिलिटी दैट आई स्पोक अबाउट दैट प्लेस अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रोल any collection guys guys please yeah any collection will have a question of whether it is being trackable or non trackable generally anonymous users can openly access non trackable collections users who are logged in get access to both non trackable collections and trackable collections okay let's move ahead uh, one question so uh, let's say there is a login user Yeah. And there is some content that is non-trackable. Ha. Uh, huh. Is for the login user, is it possible to make it trackable? E, uh, no, it's not like it is not decided at the individual user level. It is decided as a policy level. Okay. Sir. You have to call a particular collection as trackable or non-trackable from a platform point of view. Okay. Sir. When you introduce an okay. object category, if you want to make course as trackable, that's a decision at the course level. It's not for a particular course or things. okay so these are the different types of collections how it can be reimagined a playlist a textbook policies episodes web series courses all of these things are the similar manifestation used under different purposes move ahead yeah hey i am not i have not come back to my original thing yeah so these are the two things that i spoke about it's okay it's okay let it move on so what does trackable collection actually enable us it will allow the batch being created Uh, can you pause so someone i think vinu was mentioning this once you call a collection being trackable it will allow the users to create batches okay it will also assess the users so every progress you click on a content you complete a content your your progress gets tracked from 0 to 100 okay view user progress it will also enable you to see what is the user currently consuming out of a collection you might have five videos and one assessment person would have just done three so this clear progress tracking gets happened and finally the credentialing it is also possible that a trackable collection is associated with a credentialing some kind of a certificates so this is exclusively available for trackability okay and this is also available for the logged in users that is very important yeah because you need user identity at the end of the day 
So it's not property being it's more, trackable. It's okay. It's okay. Contract, Anyways, it's hardly you should not much. Understand effect. what it does. When you say trackable is equal to true, autobatch is equal to true. What it does internally should be clear. Mm. Then only you can do what you should. So just it. pause over it. Happen in the back end if you find it. Okay. If you don't understand that, then simply like something like is coming and just showing it as a printer. I don't know what happens in the back end. Yeah. Okay, so it should not be in that zone. That's why you should understand the contract clearly. So. Next, I will talk about how the user calls actually differ between a trackable and non-trackable. The API, what are the different APIs we are going to invoke? Which are the building blocks who are going to help us? That is the next thing. The, our main agenda is that this, I had to set that context before showing that. Okay. So, uh, non-trackable collections are typically, you know, the assets which gets accessed by non-logged in users. Nothing more. There is no trackability. There is no progress. However, telemetry still continues to give information on the place, progresses, exhausts. So all the exhausts get generated. So there, there was a one funnel or one metric that we always used to use saying that how many users who actually landed on the initial screen of Diksha, whether it is a portal or an app, how many of them actually converted into a place. This is a funnel that any probably product manager would be interested in, correct? Really are people able to move ahead? Where and all people are getting dropped? Telemetry, uh, for, there are some data products written some exhausts that are generated which will help us to get this information. Okay. Let's move ahead. Perfect. So now we'll go back to our agenda. Okay. Now just to give you a bit of a context, what we have learned through is a content collection types of collections. What are its relevance for a logged in and a non-logged in users? We are very clear about that, correct? Now we'll go to the user workflows. As part of my agenda, first I will cover anonymous user, anonymous user onboarding, anonymous user content play, and there ends the story for anonymous user. Next part is where the logged in user is. Okay, let's move ahead. So we'll be talking about a little bit of a, uh, 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 the building blocks involved and databases involved and all those things. Fast madapa, fast madapa. Dabba dabba dabba. Ada agat agat. Tumma munde obitra kasta adi ke baya. Akko. So the first one is anonymous user onboarding. Any new user that comes in, uh, he is expected to identify himself with what kind of a user is he? Is he a teacher, student? This is the first step that that would be asked for. The next is. To what taxonomy am I interested in? Am I a CBSE English medium class 10 or something else? That is the second step. He is an anonymous user. We don't know who this guy is, right? Third is user location. User location, uh, I think uh, Matthew was sharing this, right? If this would have been in Norway, probably this is a PII violation. But in a place like India, this is not a problem. Because uh, the, the law clearly states that anything in an approximation with a, with a, with a more than a specific area, right? It is not considered to be the PII information. So what we take is clearly a state and a district information. That's all. And and generally the reports would say how many how many people from this particular state and a district had taken up this particular content. So those are the reports that are being used. The user location gets very heavily used for all your exhausts. So I think someone dealing with uh, the data and the product they would be more interested, especially on this information. Okay. The next one is about the discovery. How does the discovery work? Look at this particular thing. User has identified what is the taxonomy he is interested in, which means discovery is going to default with the preferences that he has selected for himself. All the textbooks, all the courses which are relevant for the taxonomy that he is part of gets identified. Okay. All and home, basically these are the two tabs which are in a very generic sense. If you do a plain sunbudded installation, these are the two tabs that will be available. All is universal search. It's almost like a Amazon catalog kind of a search. You start with entire universe of content in Diksha and you will start drilling down based on the filters that you apply. This uses a very beautiful feature of elastic search that's called facets. Okay. All you need to do is once you start applying filter, it will send you back the facets saying for this particular search result, these are the filters. 
which means user is efficiently drilling down from hundreds of possibilities he is drilling down to his content which for which we'll show you the demo as well okay let's move ahead so the next one is a anonymous user content play nothing much here uh, there is a collection toc if it is a collection type if it is a purely a content then the player would manifest for itself and play the content so these are the flows i am pretty sure all of you in this room would be very comfortable with correct let's move ahead so we are not going to show you the demo on what is going to happen correspondingly on the product but a bega bega madam fast i know you can't do anything <laughs> so uh, yeah this is where i think you know the, ah hold on so this is where you know uh, things are things start to take a very different shape if you remember the gen journey that we spoke about in the session 2 okay i had specifically spoken about couple of these things for sure okay now if a you anonymous user gets on to the system the first thing that he would look at is a system settings being read it is required for the portal to be working with the system settings where a default organization is set so the org read would happen then you will have a framework read happens because organization is associated to a framework and a user management correct so you will have a framework read then you will have a channel read then you will you, uh, user location is being asked for this particular thing the location search followed by a device profile what is the device that the user is using so that the same footprint can be used for your telemetry generation finally the tenant info okay then we have couple of setup based uh, form configurations that are to be done which is the resource bundle show onboarding steps what are the profile configs so if i don't want a teacher and a student rather i want someone else called as principal then some of the form configurations that we need to go and modify are these i have a very simple question here i have used a color code can someone tell me why i have used a color code it is with a purpose is it is it just that you know i find the colors to be beautiful or does it have any significance especially on the buttons basically the tags so are people logged in and non logged in user no 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 this is a non logged in user flow only oh, yeah, exactly. so th uh, there has to be some distinction right i also gave a hint Actually, just now no if you see the board you can easily easily see. understand yeah okay. if you the see this board you will easily understand why i have put in those colors so i'll ask you this question where does the org read stand org read which building block does it stand learn, learn. so anything that comes under the learn comes in as green okay. anything that comes from the knowledge, knowledge comes in as this okay and anything on the form apis the basic configuration setup it comes in in this coding format okay this is just to make sure that you know this is how actually multiple building blocks come together to carve out your solution and these are the apis that you guys have to be understanding okay okay so what are some of the databases that gets used um, knowledge specifically uses cassandra and neo4j very heavily and redis for caching redis is a default to cache for all the systems okay i will not explain this separately but these are the things neo4j and cassandra is what is being used by knowledge okay neo4j is for the graph db so so it's used for the relationships and all those the node relations and everything that is managed in neo4j postgres um since we have a device profile no not device profile right ha huh, device profile right device profile so that information actually go gets goes and gets stored in the postgres today okay so and and all of the form configurations can someone tell me ext framework what is the database choice i had said this in my session 1 out of this is it a b c d <laughs> it's actually cassandra don't worry <laughs> so it's it's just cassandra ext framework runs on if you remember there were four keys part primary key partition key and all those things it's on the columnar db structure it gets stored in cassandra 
it's a JSON dump for a lot of UI work. Let's move ahead. I have put it in the right to left, same sequence. You can even validate this against a live Diksha instance. I think, you, I think in the next uh, iteration you will show that actually by the each APIs, right? Yeah, yeah. In the next slide, I think. So this is the discovery. So I'll just give the names. Then later we'll show the Postman collection of each no, of them. You have uh, written that. Uh, yeah. Inon madapa. Uh, uh, so Vinu is pointing out we have missed out one of the DB, Elasticsearch. Yeah, Elasticsearch. Because yeah. all the uh, search APIs Most trigger the from, trigger from this, correct, uh, correct. Uh, Elasticsearch. Elastic. So any uh, of your uh, searching, uh, any of your search that happens, especially content-based search, filter-based search, everything gets served by Elasticsearch. Elastic I think I might have missed it in this. Okay, now we'll go to the discovery. What are the APIs that are being hit in the discovery? So you have a menu. Correct? That comes in as digital textbooks. What do they actually manifest? There is only one API. Nothing else more than that. All the tabs do magic using this. What is called as composite search. It's only one API that gets hit with the different parameters. For digital textbooks, it will say call me the composite search API with the primary category being digital textbooks. For courses, pretty much the same. So your rule changes for every story. But it's, it's purely the composite search is what we are doing. And knowledge prime capability is also the composite search. It allows the contents to get discovered through elastic search, through a different filtering mechanism. All the metadata that we ran through, all the taxonomy association that was tagged to a content, composite search will help us to uncover its potential. Okay? Perfect. So, are we clear on how Content metadata tagging will help the user to find out his own contents which are relevant for him. So again, I have put everything in a specific color code. It means there are knowledge APIs. Because we are dealing with a content, content search, these are the ones which are available. Okay. Uh, so what? why do we need a content read? Probably this is one of the questions a lot of people might have. When you do a search on your tabs, what you have is a specific card available, right? It's a textbook or a learning resource. If you want to go to a player, which is your next logical step, you need to do an explicit content read. So that is a content read API that is going to hit. Uh, menu bar, there is a separate thing that I have to run you guys through. So I have been talking extensibility framework, but I have not shown you even a single example. It's very important. I'll cover this at the end of this PPT. Okay, let's move ahead. Since it's all knowledge, basically Elasticsearch, Cassandra, Neo4j, Redis. The, there is no Postgres, if you look at. Because it's only knowledge. Now it's a play, user play. This is very, very simple, nothing much. It's just a TOC that gets displayed based on the collection hierarchy. This is purely a content read. If you're directly landing into a player page, you would have do, you would be doing a content read. If it is a collection, then we would have done a collection hierarchy. Collection read and then sorry, collection hierarchy, then content. then content read. If it is a folder, first you will access the folder and then the file. Similarly, collection hierarchy followed by the content read. Are we clear on anonymous user flow? What are the APIs which are important? What are the building blocks? At least the core building blocks. Okay, perfect. Let's move ahead. Now comes the logged in user. This is where bulk of our APIs will start to become very intense. It has all the APIs that gets called for the anonymous users. In addition to that, we have a trackability, we have user existence. So which means more API overheads would come in. So see, I'm, I, can, I can give a very sunbird, sunbirdistic view, but I'm just trying to talk like a front end person so that the, a lot of front end people will be able to connect. The first one is a user login. So you have a user login API. Once the user gets logged in, he will go through a profile read, user v3 profile. So this is also one of the APIs on the learn. Followed by you have, you will start invoking what is the organization that the user belongs to. A user, if you remember, 
organization had two branches, correct? User always belongs to an organization. Based on user's identity, you will start doing org read. Framework read, channel read, same thing, doesn't change, the story doesn't change. Device profile, this is mainly used for your telemetry purposes. We have been doing the same thing again over there. There are two specific API calls that might come in. It, there might be more as well. One is the TNC read, the terms and conditions. Any logged in user, he is supposed to you know, understand the terms and conditions before using the platform. So this is a compliance. So we have an explicit API to check that. And then there can also be a notifications that can be received as part of the user. So we generally do a notifications read with respect to that user. So these are the APIs that we are going to invoke specifically. Two specific things I want to highlight it here is key clock. So your entire authentication is managed inside a key clock. Okay, it's a, it's a federated model, of course, uh, wherein uh, there is a realm that is being created and all the users are being accommodated into that. Any new organization, it will just move on being a different realm. Okay. Yeah. Portal back in the sessions are maintained at various. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Node is responsible for monitoring the sessions. Sessions, Once yeah. Key clock authentication is successfully validated. The user is authenticated. The session is created and uh, it is handled by the portal back. Portal back in, yeah. Covered in detail tomorrow, but add on to that, so that is a. There is something called as a key clock client where they use it. So there are multiple authentication mechanisms. Login as a normal user where you have a registry entry in the Sunbird itself. You can even log in as a Google user, sign in with Google, sign in with external systems, state systems, SSO. All of those things are supported, and the sessions of all of these users are managed in Keyclock. Okay. All these APIs, uh, nine APIs, right? Yeah. So are these dependent on each other? I mean, any any API which? Uh, now you tell me. Now uh, you uh, logically you have to you help have to me. That. Uh, what are the what is the core? So does the user login is required to invoke our user profile read? Of yeah. course, right? Now, yeah, otherwise, device profile after the user login. Device profile is independent. independent. Other than that, or greed. Yeah. Or greed gets decided by the user profile, correct? So it is dependent on the user login API or the other API. Also. Users information, user profile read information will say what organization does this user belongs to. Based on that, you will. Are you a Tamil Nadu board user? Are you a CBSE board user? That is the your user profile read will suggest. It says, as a user, whom are you associated to? If you remember my previous session. Mm -hmm. So, user profile read will give will let you know what is the org read to be done. Org is associated with a framework and a channel. So, all of these things start to get triggered. So, they are all together. Yes, absolutely. And that's called as a tenant. That's a tenant information. You can just go and replace that with any logo. It will start to load in. Just on a lighter note, there is a mistake in that. <laughs> you just tell me what is it. I am extremely sorry. I didn't realize it when you showed me in the morning. Just now I realized it. Where? Here? The color coding. There is a mistake. Pink. Ah. Pink color? It's pink color, huh? No, no. That huh? is pink depending on something else. Ah. But there is a mistake. Hey, you are playing a quiz. You should give the answer. <laughs> okay. Org and channel is it in red color? Sorry, org, channel, and framework are in red color. But org should have, org should have been in the learn. Learn ka. So there is that small mistake. User, user profile read, all are in green. It's learn APIs. Org is also learn API if you see the board. Yeah. It has been in red. It's been in red. Yeah. Thank you. I will, I will, I will Sorry. rectify the mistake. <laughs> Even the notification, it's a learn API. Yeah, notification is also a learn API, correct. So anything with respect to a user, which revolves around a user, learn is a place, okay? Now, the content discovery. If we look at anonymous user content discovery, there is going to be a little bit of an addition into this. That's called enrollment list. As a user, you would have got enrolled in, into a course, into a trackable collection, right? You may have a requirement of showing them explicitly, my enrolled courses. That is where you are going to invoke this. Let's come to the next. Play and content tracking. This is super duper important. 99% of your issues will come in these two things. 
because this is where the outcome for the user is. Lot of P1s get actually tracked these two. If you master over these APIs, how they work, trust me, rest of the things are very minuscule. Uh, when, when a user actually gets on to this play business, right, user's progress gets tracked. So there are three specific APIs that gets invoked. One is a normal content read where you are getting a basic content metadata. You have done that. There is also a course enrollment API. If a person wants to join a course, you need to invoke a course enrollment API. These are the two things which are progress tracking APIs. Content state read will tell what is the present status of the user with respect to a collection. Uh, Vinu as a user might be 60% progress in a course. That gets decided by content state read. If let's say Vinu goes ahead and consumes the content in a, inside a collection, you will have a content state update being invoked. Okay, So your progress tracking gets done with these two key APIs. And this is a most heavily used API in the entire ecosystem other than telemetry. If you consider telemetry to be the number one most traffic consumed API, these are the two APIs where you will have maximum reads and writes. Okay, And bulk of the things, bulk of the art is you know getting this right. And lot of your issues, certifications, everything, the root cause would be mostly out here. <coughs> then we'll talk about the passbook and certificates. So my enrollment list, uh, the enrollment list API is what is again leveraged, which will allow you to construct your passbook. It's just a my enrollment API data, but being constructed in a very different way. It allows what is a certificate attached to that for the user. All that information is available. In this case, we don't show the certificate view. Here we show the certificate view explicitly if it is available. Then we have a certificate read API. If you want to view or download, the download there is an explicit URL. If you want to read, it's a call to Sunbird RC, registry and credentialing, where all your certificates are being stored. There is a, there is a specific contract on certificate read where you will get the SVG that you will convert it into a PDF and shown to the user. This happens on the front end, by the way. Okay, that's the reason I'm covering it out. Okay. These APIs are individual, so uh, uh, the endpoints which you have used for it. Correct. So what, uh, I mean, you have some naming convention for it, if you can share. Yeah, so basically the, the color coding is the one which defines what is a block, building block. If you look at all of these things, you will, you will f there will be a Postman collection. You will get to see all of these APIs. Yeah, it is available. So it's a open source. So it's so open source. Just search for Sunbird uh, uh, collection, uh, sorry, you, collections. You, will get you, it. you can do it right away also. You'll get all of these things, whatever I'm referring to. Collection. Yeah. I'll check it. What yeah. is the of observation read? So observation read is basically, uh, there is a persona called as uh, uh, administrator. Okay. There was a use case in Diksha that an administrator should be able to go and conduct surveys, capture observations on the school facility. Is that related to manage learning? Yes, manage learn. So this is that observation read. So since it is a passbook, right, you cannot have a different passbook just because these are two different things. You need to have a unified view on a passbook saying these are, your, these are my observations, these are my surveys that I have answered. Along with that, you will also have all the enrolled courses along with that certificates. So both come into that learner's passbook in Perfect. Perfect. So that's how I'm trying to construct the view. Whatever you would have seen as a user, how do they get translated into API? Okay. So let's move ahead. I think there is one specific thing that I have not spoken about. I think I will go by your input rather than, you know, I don't want to stuff too many things to you guys. If you guys think you know you have some time, I will explain how one configuration, which is a very main configuration, I think Sir was actually referring to it. If I want to make changes to this UI, right, I will take that one key API and one key form configuration and I will show how to actually modify it. Okay. Super. Perfect. So you guys want a two minutes break or should we just continue? Are we okay? Perfect. Menu bar. Uh, menu bar, yeah. Menu bar, menu bar. So the thing is, uh, the whole 
UI is in, built in a way that it can be configured. You don't have Staging to uh, stop and start it again. Uh, you don't have to, uh, when you do some changes, you don't have to stop the entire server, rebuild it, start it again. No, you don't have to do that. You Minimize configure that. certain things, you don't want to uh, really? do it in the UI. Staging UI, on the itself, on the Staging UI Staging UI. Yes. So that I found that is coming from that SB library card B1, B2. Correct, correct, mm -hmm. correct. So if we want to change the HTML there, mm -hmm. we'll have to... Put it in the external library, do a NPM update and run, that's all. Fork it on our own side. Yeah, correct. Yeah, you can fork it and change, if you, if you are changing it, I mean, is it only for Diksha or you have only to... Only for Diksha. No, no, no. What I'm saying is, is that useful only for Diksha? Or is it an, an Can I reuse your card is the first question that I will have. Let's yeah. assume you implemented a beautiful component, Very okay? Nice component. Which do you think that can be used by the other people? Not only for by Diksha, but See, everyone else. Ev every com every component will have a clear contract at input, at output. Correct? At input will receive all the inputs, which means sunbird data is what you are receiving. At output, you are giving all click handlers, yes, correct? Right. If you are creating a new template, I am pretty sure everyone in the community would be more than happy to welcome it because someone else can also reuse your code without even bearing a cost like not, not as in a new template, just maybe addition or subtraction or something. yeah yeah definitely possible in fact we have added at least 10 to uh, at least 7 to 8 versions of this particular card this has been changed 8 times if you change this 50% of your UA will start to change and if you change this, another 50% will change. Rest of the things you will just manage. Okay. So that's the reason, you know, generalize, externalize, this is where it helps. You don't affect the workability of your code, main code. You are just handling a library like a micro front end. And just push your code, test it out if it works, just push it. And then change the references of the V1 to V2. Okay, so now uh, what we are going to talk about is one form configuration which is responsible to deliver this section. Okay, generally, generally, this is where the bulk of your changes would come. Either I want to go and change something in the home or I want more tabs. I want quizzes to be displayed. I want something more to be displayed. Does it mean uh, engineering capability has to be put in front? A cost has to be imposed, the answer is no. If you can drive it with configuration, it is going to give you a lot more flexibility. You can have any number of tabs, you can build any number of stories, all you need is go and configure the JSON. The question is, can we master the configuration? <laughs> that, is a, that is a bigger question. I think as engineers, we have also been swimming through <laughs> because engineers are generally very enthusiastic when they build things, they only realize, you know, uh, sometimes when I look at this, right, the the way how I imagine uh, some of the some of these features, and I'll make I'll make a very humorous comment on it, is like you can imagine a restroom, okay, with almost thousand switches, and there is only one bulb. The guy enters the restroom now. There is only one combination of the switch where the bulb would get on. The person is worried whether I should use the restroom first or should I switch on the bulb first because there is a thousand combinations to you know switch on turn on the bulb. So sometimes you know over configuration also kills but it's all the smart way of managing. Whatever your business needs are you need to manage it. So now just to set the context for the larger things this is where your needs are gets addressed. We are talking about the configuration which will manage this entire set. Okay. Let's move on, go back to that. So if you look at this, uh, just open one of the fields. Uh, no, no my not my downloads. My download. Just open a course. Course is okay. Course, Co is, course is perfect. No, that's okay, that's okay. That will come later. So, uh, search and collapse, Madi. Ah, uh, fine. Perfect. So if you look at it, uh, this is called as a menu bar. Uh, can you show the component object type, the ext taxonomy framework, uh, sorry, ext frameworks uh, component type subtype action in the version? Anybody can 
ಅದು ಹಾಕೊ ಅದನ್ನು ಸ್ವಚ್ಛ ಓಕೆ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ ಹಾಕ್ಬಿಡಪ್ಪ ಈಗ ಇದರಲ್ಲಿ ಯಾವ್ದು ಹೇಳು ಸೊ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಲುಕ್ ಎಟ್ ವೆನ್ ವಿ ವೆನ್ ವಿ ಸ್ಪೋಕ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಇನ್ ಅವರ್ ಪ್ರೀವಿಯಸ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ವಿ ಸೆಟ್ ದೆರ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಅ ಕಾಂಪೊನೆಂಟ್ ಆಕ್ಷನ್ ಟೈಪ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸಬ್ ಟೈಪ್ ಕರೆಕ್ಟ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಕಾಂಟ್ರಾಕ್ಟ್ ವೇರ್ ಯುವರ್ ಜೇಸೋನ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಗೆಟಿಂಗ್ ಪರ್ಸಿಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ಕಸಾಂಧ್ರ ಓಕೆ ನೌ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಲುಕ್ ಎಟ್ ದಟ್ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಕಸಾಂಧ್ರ ಎಂಟ್ರಿ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಜೇಸೋನ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಯು ಗೋ ಟು ದಟ್ ಜೇಸೋನ್ so right now it says this is a configuration which is used to manage that menu bar and also its respective contents okay right now it says there are around 9 tabs which are being configured uh, can you close this the one open the zero so so basically there are there are few of the things where are like my downloads and all is specific to the desktop it's not relevant for uh, the online client like web okay so let's just one second i'll just inform uh, one thing there uh, even that is also configured even if it is configured and uh, marked it as uh, enabled. enabled as true it is not showing in the ui in if you use our web it is not getting shown how is it not done is there is one more configuration called as is online only if it is online then only show it otherwise it is for the desktop okay so so basically every everything every tab that you are looking at there would have been configured in more or less in a similar way okay now let's get into this what are some of these things uh there is always a search query if you remember every tab would have got constructed into a search query correct it's a composite search saying get me textbooks so there is also a search query so that search query is also a configuration no no don't worry we'll do that later with some relevant thing there is also a title so the title can be your own custom title or you can also refer to your resource bundle the resource bundle is something a lot of front end engineers would be able to yeah then you have login mandatory is it available for the only logged in users non logged in users and there is also a route so for a user if he is a logged in what is the route to be taken up if he is not logged in what is the route to be taken up then you have a couple of theme related things which are which are really not required and then there is a general description and what is a menu type menu type is actually it's giving a content okay can you minimize this can we go with the further fields now let's look at what is available one of them which is relevant so if you look at the second one yeah that's okay this is a textbook field it has a title called textbooks it has a anonymous and logged in route is use is online only is true which means it is relevant for portal as well i don't understand why you uh, write a title like this like not just a textbook which one this one title yes. because this is your uh, uh, resource bundle tech key value pair right Basically, if you want to change the language and if you want textbooks to come in hindi then you need this key correct if you put in english it will come in as english and it will not get translated and lot of users you know who are, who have challenges with english will end up failing with this content just the text being uh, straight english so whatever the value this goes to the resource service mm-hmm. which in turn translates your uh, the value, value to the respective language i mean the whatever the value with respect to the end dot properties file and that is source list where the value is mentioned correct it is locally built in the project yeah it is there in the project it is there in the project so search for en dot properties mm-hmm. we have around the 7 13 yeah, yes, 13 languages uh, it is coming from there yeah, yeah. it's really coming from there he, he had a question yeah. yeah actually i was studying with this for the desktop app like long ago i think i tagged you and rajesh in the relation oh sorry so like those translations were not coming in the desktop app those were just so the thing is you need to uh, okay uh, whenever you have updated the uh, tags right you need to build it and uh, re push it actually the properties are actually in en dot properties yeah, yeah. but when you uh, trigger you have to get it as en dot json right right there is a uh, in your uh, package dot json there is a script for doing that also right 
okay once you do it it will start uh, showing up in your uh, desktop app as well it, it wasn't actually it, it, it was just showing that fr element dot lpl like i tried that also okay so that label may not be present in es it was it was present it was present could be could be could be could be an error also well. quite could possible could be an error so we can have a look okay so so this is one of the types so let's let's move ahead just now let's quickly go into the next one third fourth so if you look at this is a tv program this is enabled come down yeah this is all this is enabled this also has a search contract so it's all built in specifically with respect to composite search so uh can you get inside theme so this has uh, basically if you want an icon associated with it if you want a css class associated with that small tab then you can use this so if you want to change the color you want to influence some of the look and feel of it you can use this so basically css is also set from this display you can see css if you remember css if you remember is externalized you can override your css without even affecting the main project correct correct so correct Absolutely. I mean. So this is like a uh, you mentioned like you showed me uh, some CSS library. Yeah. Uh, you have mentioned uh, some library like theme. Correct. Uh, correct. SB theme. SB theme. So, SB theme. Yes. So it's like uh, provide some styling or. Correct. Where we can hide. So if you override those styles, it will start to change the look and feel of your entire application. Okay. Where this uh, the class use this. Yes. Theme. But layouts doesn't change. For layout changing and all, you have to do some more work. If you want to use your own class, then it is a engineering change because you can't introduce a class like that, inject the class because there are the classes which are already there. You can override the class rather. Okay. Override so the value of the class. Override the value of the CSS values CSS of the class. It affects the entire application. Yes. yes. No, 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 no. If you're overriding means through configuration, if you override, <laughs> only that particular option. No, no, we know. <laughs> it's not in that way. If you have a global CSS, let's assume, and SB themes or SB styles. If she wants to override a CSS class, it's possible. It's a, it's a CSS it's a three, change. but CSS but you are not changing in a sunbird portal, but rather you are changing it in SB themes, which is an independent repo. You change there, you publish it, just change the npm value, okay. push it. There is no regression cycle or anything involved. Okay, let's move ahead in the interest of the time. So you can see the image name and couple of other things being used. and also the text color base color all of those things being used if it is not available it defaults okay so all the tabs that you look at is being used by default okay let's take an example of textbook now okay if i want to create a new story that's called as digital textbooks how would i define the configuration i will just replicate the structure and i will start modifying the search can you go inside the search So as I said, uh, you don't need to be in fields. Uh, go to the filters, filters. So any search would work on what is called as a filters. This is a pure elastic search, uh, you know, uh, you know feature. There is nothing as a rocket science. It's just that you know you are constructing a filters how the elastic search would understand. The it says a primary category digital textbooks and e-textbooks get me all the results. That's all. Okay 